Hey guys, I'm back with the final palette of the Colorful Reptile series. For this set of pores, I've been taking images of reptiles and using an online color picking tool to choose a palette. From there, I use the palette as a guide when mixing acrylic paint for fluid art. Coming up with custom mixed colors for your acrylic pores can be incredibly rewarding as an artist. Today, I'm working with the colors from the Toke Gecko. Throughout this series, I have tried to stress that you do not have to be an expert to mix your own custom colors. I myself do not claim to be an expert. I just truly enjoy the process of color mixing. I can spend hours just mixing new colors. Creating an original piece of art with my own personalized colors is just such a wonderful process to me. Let's review some of the things that we can look for when choosing paints for an acrylic pour. I like to use a wide variety of types and brands of acrylic paint. Acrylic paints are a combination of pigment, binder, and some solvents to smooth it all out. The biggest difference among acrylic paint types is the binder being used. Acrylic binders hold the pigment particles together to create the paint film when dry. Artist grade paints have less of a color shift from wet to dry because their binders start out clearer than those in student grade paint. This means that while mixing, you can assume that the color of a wet artist grade paint will be roughly the same dry. For student grade paints, there's typically a slight darkening when it dries, so mixing a step lighter than you actually need may be helpful. Keep in mind that pouring mediums are going to have an initial matting effect when added to the paint. While gloss mediums will dry clear, they usually start out a milky white color. As gloss mediums dry, they lose their hazy appearance and the colors appear as they did when you initially mixed. Matte, satin, and flat mediums all have extra matting solids in them and will remain hazy when dry. When mixing acrylic paint, it's helpful to know what pigments you're actually mixing together. I recommend becoming acquainted with the color index code of your pigments. The color index code is listed on all artist grade and most student grade acrylic paints. It will start with the letter P. For example, True Cadmium Red will have the pigment code of PR108. For it to be pure cadmium red, that should be the only code listed. If you see a bottle that's labeled cadmium red, but instead it contains PR170 and PV19, your paint is considered to be a cadmium red hue. Now real cadmium pigments are more expensive and can be toxic. You shouldn't worry about the occasional contact with it. Just don't sit and eat it or let young kids and animals play with it just to be on the safe side. Combination pigments or hues are the answer to the pigments that are too expensive or a bit dangerous to work with. Knowing which pigments are being used to make your acrylic paint will help you when mixing. You don't have to know the names of every pigment available, but just knowing the color family it belongs to is useful. If you want to mix a bright green, it will be more effective to mix a yellow with Thalo Blue Green Shade, PB15-3, as opposed to Thalo Blue Red Shade, PB15-6. We also talked a bit about the science behind a pour. The same principle that makes exploding stars appear as they do guide acrylic pours. The Riley-Taylor instability is the magic behind fluid art. Basically, it says that fluids of a lighter density are naturally going to shift towards the top, while denser fluids will sink towards the bottom. Since pigments differ in density, we can layer and move them in various ways to force this instability into action. By experimenting with the order of the paints on the canvas, we can change the way they interact. When it comes to mixing acrylic paints for custom colors, you're only limited by your experimentation. Even if you don't know the color wheel backwards and forwards, you can mix paint. I like having slightly different colors every time I mix so I don't keep meticulous notes during my process. I will write the names of the colors I mix together, but I do not weigh or measure anything to keep track. If you want to be able to recreate colors that you come up with, make sure you take notes. 
A mixed media or other thick paper notebook is perfect for keeping swatches of the color with your notes. Even something as simple as two parts red to one part yellow noted by your swatch can help you recreate those colors over and over. Every time you sit down to mix acrylic paint, you will get more in tune with how these colors work together. When I have a mixing session, I get as close to a match as possible with my current abilities. In my opinion, it doesn't have to be a perfect match. Would it be cool if I could get an exact match? Of course, and maybe one day I will get to that skill level. Until then, I'm just happy creating something new. So guys, I have another canvas with the Tokay Gecko colors to share with you in the next video. I managed to get a spot at a large art festival in town for next month, so I'm going to be working my butt off trying to get everything ready for it. I have a few older pours to share with you guys in the meantime. Once the dust has settled from that, I would like to explore the science behind pours more. Would you guys be interested in a series of testing out the different ways that the densities of paint can be used to create acrylic pours? If you want to have a deeper dive into the science of acrylic pouring, let me know in the comments below. I think we could have a lot of fun with it. Alright, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys learned a little more about acrylic paint and mixing throughout this series. I had a lot of fun trying to match the colors and creating pours with the results. If you haven't already, go ahead and take a second to subscribe. I bring you a new video every Tuesday and Friday, so make sure you don't miss the next one. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!